Hello and welcome back to another episode of uh, Warhammer Rogue Trader. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the blind playthrough on harder than unfair difficulty. We cranked up the difficulty even beyond hard. No, not beyond hard, beyond, beyond unfair. It is uh, cranked up to the max. I think there is just one more thing that we could crank up to the absolute max which is dodge a chance of enemies and i'll be careful with that Powers we're going to see in the labyrinth uh, right now if our tuning to unfair plus difficulty uh, was maybe overdoing it but uh, i like hard fights so we're going to find out whether or not that is true um, we got a nice team as i mentioned at the last uh, time not our prime team but four of our prime team members and two kind of additional ones with Yerlet and Malasar. and uh, this is not a bad oh well <laughs> we we went the entire uh, wrong way. I was about to say this is not a bad formation, but it is if you're running the wrong way. Anyways, what I was about to say is we got a really good team uh, together and we have been breathing through most of the mission fights uh, with not much difficulty. So we're going to build up a second team, uh, all of the story characters that I haven't given the time of the day. And we're just going to see how that is going to work out. Plus. I will take talents and um, abilities that we have not taken so far just to see and round up the experience of the game and um, to truly assess what is good and what isn't. You can never say that something is OP before you have seen everything. So with that being said, enough of the interlude. We are here in the heart of the storm to make short work of the last Drukhari and hopefully we're getting off of this craft world as soon as possible it's been a tedious very uh, taxing journey here and of course Marazai finds something Marasai spent several minutes rifling through the items on the table until he stops. Having noticed something with a satisfying growl, he drags a long, pliable, spiked whip from the pile. You hear a click and then an icy glow ripples across uh, the whip's smooth surface like a crackling sound. I did not find my shadow field generator and my toxin kin is gone too, but at least I have found my favorite toy. The Drukhari shows his find. Do you know what that is, Saiken? Um, any object you call favorite to uh, toy can not possibly be anything good. Oh, the contrary. I have exceptional taste. An antagonizer, an electric disintegrator that acts upon the nerve impulses. This particular one is too fine of a piece to be used in combat. But in a torture chamber, the Drukhari uh, hefts the whip, clearly familiar with the feel and the weight of his hand. An exquisite instrument of pain, total impulse control. I can deliver sensations as subtle as a whisper or incinerate synapses. All right, why is uh, that so important to you? Why? It is a priceless artifact that belongs to me, and I have reclaimed it before my kin managed to steal it. It is property of the raving tempest that must not be allowed to fall into the hands of other cabal, and when we dispose of Yerimeris, the spire will certainly come under attack. And lastly, I can indulge a little sentimentality, can't I? You may keep it. Marzai weighs the whip in his hand and gives you an appraising look. At last he says softly, Do you want to try it out? A little demonstration? His eyes dart to your arm. Uh... Put that foul thing away. Marazai 
cuts in disappointment, but nevertheless coils up the agonizer and clips it to his belt. Let us go. I no longer have any desire to wander in the spire. And with that, we have uh, completed his side quest. I tread a path unexplored. All of this for a device of torture, but it is so fitting to his character. Character writing in this game is fabulous. Absolutely outstanding. Really good NPCs. Oh, someone is in a grumpy mood. Okay, I imagine Imaris um, with a high-pitched kind of voice of a mother-in-law. Miserable worm. Imaris hisses through her teeth upon seeing you. Despite her blazing eyes and her bearded teeth, you plainly discern what the Drukhari's heart fear. I will see to it that death comes for you slowly. The Archon's gaze shifts away from you to Mara's eye. A venomous smile spreads across her face. My former Dracon, my inept executioner, have you found yourself a new master? Mara's eye draws his weapon in a single fluid motion. Before your soul perishes into the maw of she who thirsts, I will teach you pain. The kind of pain you have never known in the whole world of your existence, sister. What about you, child of Krulrak? How does it feel to know that you could uh, not save yourself, your family, or your precious crafts world? Of course. She's trying to spread deceit. Uh, Ilit is like uh, going like, your death will give me no joy, Archon Humeres but it may give peace to the spirits of my kin. Okay, all of... Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Why do you need the Farseer for? Why take such risk? So be it. I will humor you before death. If only to step out of another shadow once and for all. I wish to orchestrate a little disjunction. And with my helpless brethren in my clutches who are capable of tethering apart the whale with their mere presence, it could not have been simpler. When the time came, uh, the Farseers would be my weapon against the Revis Tempest rivals under the uh, cover of the Cataclysm. My blade... Uh, would uh, behead all those who stood in the way of my ascent. Marzai says you destroyed your future with your own hands. When you, the truth became known, all weapons of the Komarak would have turned against you and against the Mai Kabal. Uh, Imres goes, and that cowers, um, and this coward was my Dracon. You are too quick to call the reaving tempest of your cabal. You have neither the ambition nor the vision to lead all of these warriors full of lust for power and blood. Marzai loves mockingly, dragging farseers into a spire in an attempt to trigger a disjunction. That was your grand vision? It is a pity you have not bothered to lead a single raid in the recent years. Would have been entertaining to watch you order a fleet of fly headed into the monkey structure and detonate their engines. I've grown tired of the games. Prepare to die, Archon Humorous. Die? <laughs> you are the only one who dies here today. Do you know, monkey, that so many of your kin have had their lives, uh, lives cut short at the end of their own kin? I used to purge the ring of the Cabal to clear all obstacles from my path. I used to accomplish my goal. I colluded with your kin despite of the much uh, uh, vaunted uh, um, hatred of Xenas. Uh, Marzai says you purged the rings of the Cabal and cleared most obstacles in your path. Even in that you failed, you talentless wretch. I'm still here. 
I will be the one perching you. All right, we will destroy her. And of course. Sweet death. Mm. I like what I'm seeing. So, Incubus, 700 hit points. Humorous comes in at a nice little 1700, and we got two 700 or grotesques down there. An 800 and an 800 here. We are truly up for a beating of a lifetime. I like what I'm seeing. Get into position. Because this is going to hurt a lot. Start the battle. All right. Um, let's just get a couple of stacks of versatility. 150 hit points. Never wrong. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Get all of uh, these guys together. Good time to remove a couple of hit points. It's 200 damage, and the others took quite a bit of damage as well. Oh, there is another one. Can't leave you guys hanging around here all by yourself. Much better. Nice little hit for everyone. Uh, we're putting a trap down here. One, two, three. And Eremus uh, gets. You cannot force me a long talk. Extra damage. Fantastic. Good. <clears throat> if I may. And we're getting more may. cover efficiency. I like if that. You insist, Lord Captain. Imarez bursts her own kin. <laughs> Pathetic. But funny nonetheless. Putting a couple intent. more traps down. Oh, that's a good hit. If it serves your cause. You will pay nice little triple price. hit. I like that. Another double hit. Good. If I must, I am not your zenith. All right, Heinrichs. Let's see to it. Gives himself forewarning. I like that. Naturally. Get me a target. I won't object to it. All right, all of you shall attack him going forward. 
descend upon the weak. Okay, we take this and this. Uh, we're a little bit high on the veil scale, but it must be done. I will triumph. Purpose. Uh, Marazai has been knocked to the ground. Uh, that sucks. Sorry for that, Marazai. But we killed Stop two. Trying, monkey. All right, you get that. And that, and Ulfar go ahead and go to town with all of these non-believers. All right. So shall it be. Let's get this one here. Oh boy, that's a lot of damage. Love it. Okay, fantastic. Man, Wolfgar is just... Wolfgar is absolutely killing it. Free reload, and we're just continuing. <laughs> he just killed them all. Continuing to hit Iremis. And we got a full new turn. Um, how about Cassia is taking that? Ruin beckons. I am a navigator, not a servant. Well, now the grotesque just. Disappeared somewhere over there. That's not cool. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Me. Might as well Captain. put him in place. Uh, this guy m could be immobilized. Marzai moves up. Parried. Take that. Open the grotesque. Um. Don't distract me. 
and that would be a lot of damage but that I think would even be more Wow that's a lot of damage that was 300 plus points of damage just take a turn although it's not their turn a couple of turrets that we need to deal with that's unfortunate no Olfa heals himself no gives him more sex Heinrichs needs help. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet. Me? If you insist, Lord Captain. I see a little stair. I am a navigator. Witness the fury Bit more damage. And the incubus takes even more damage uh, from being debuffed. Channel my pain into anger. Okay, Heinrichs, that's not good. Uh, things are not looking great. I needed that. For the heal, heal. Imra seems to be hitting almost always. And we're taking desperate measures with him. Perry. Um, I won't object. Continuing to hit, yeah, well. Apparently, the parry is too strong For the with Imaris. I won't object to it. We're healing ourselves a little bit further. And dodge is actually quite good. Unclear how they still manage to hit us. What's wrong with Ulfar? And why is he 
disabled. Staggered, but why? When Ulfa falls unconscious, instead he stays inactive for two rounds, becoming untargetable. I don't know, he was not uh, single handedly killed. But who knows? I mean. Alright, that's up to a thousand. Fabulous hit. Moves to here, Amidst the carnage, buffs him. I find this is beneath me. Hmm. Pain is okay, they are hitting hard. Even Maserai is taking a lot of damage. Open, do this, and uh, of course, a parry. Unfortunate. Marazai is down to five uh, hit points, it's not a lot. Heal Saiken. Um, move over here. That's a good hit. That's uh, simply a kill. I like that. And Me. so I can get an action. Insist, Lord Captain. Uh, Use well that to heal so himself. Like Almost no damage against uh, that turret, which of course is not good. Um, I have to wonder what are we going to do. Uh, let's give everybody extra damage. Heinrichs, 
Uh, this is not the best time you have to be a frontliner. That's a nice little parry. No. Healing ourselves and offhand, or are we going to do anything else? really hit uh, that thing but we can kill the grotesques once they are a little bit closer we've cleared this side we move to here and exterminate the uh, this guy which I'm potentially doing Everybody gets a bit more defense. Um, Papa's guides me. Good, thousand three hundred. Oh, let's go, baby. That's a double kill right here. Uh, Saiken can't go down, I need to keep him in cover. Imaris is pretty strong. Unfortunately, Malazar just uh, went down. That's not great. But earlier than him are the two that were expected to go down, so I really wasn't expecting much to happen. Alright, keep it going here. Is she still debuffed? Yeah, she is. Me, if you insist, Lord Captain. Do not dare ask. I am a navigator, not a servitor. All right, all for here. None can do this better than a warrior of the old father. Let's go. Couple of worthy hits, I like it. Whereas takes even more damage. We're good, she 18 points of damage. Isn't this a job for the stars? Another hundred. I'm not accustomed to being And another 250. As Cassia starts damage dealing as well. Heinrich had 
successfully tanked there for three rounds. this <laughs> Saiken pushes it in for a thousand love it Cassia hits and forces this guy to literally stand there Less hit points. Cassia buffs herself. And begins to nuke him nuke him down. <laughs> I did not overtune it. It was just the right tuning. Um yeah, well, it turns out that with 50% more every stat, they are actually hitting quite hard. Ah, that is the only thing that I'm disappointed uh, about is that Heinrichs couldn't really stand. Well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, he was standing there three rounds, so to be fair, that was already very, very good, but. We couldn't. Uh, uh, we couldn't hit uh, her. So I can look at this. Your enemy soul is in the palm of your hands, under your complete control, at the mercy of your desires. Is this not the greatest revenge for the past wrongs? Does this have a practical benefit? It does. Your mysterious suffering will give me strength on the battlefield. Perhaps one day, I will want to replace her. Uh, soul with the essence of another more worthy opponent, but that will not uh, that will not come to pass anytime soon. All right, we should go. And I personally must say. It's lamentable that both Iliad and him couldn't really do much in the final fight. It appears the consequence of certain someone's actions have caught up to them. You should not have crawled out of the abyss. Uh, you wretched kin calls home, consider our pack broken. Nazarakai did not hold up to his end of the bargain, so I had to finish the job myself. The result matter not, the sacrifice will be made. Make the sacrifice, monkey. The tribe never relents. The tribe will find you. Well, for with a pure heart, I will rise, um, uh, raise my horn and praise to the All Father on the day that uh, this sharp-tongued scum dies, giving him up without a fight uh, to this talking mob is shameful. Marzai stays with me. Away with you, beasts. And if the fields needs a lesson in the language of pain, senseless creature, the tribe will find you. The tribe will have its sacrifice. Wonderful. So, Shadowfield. At the beginning of the combat, the wearer gains the Shadowfield effect. While under the effect, the wearer counts as being in full cover against ranged attacks. Effect is lost when the wearer is hit by a ranged attack and suffers damage from it. Hmm, that's pretty damn good. Wearer gains in bonus to dodge. To the wearer and their allies. Uh, that is very good. Monkey hide cape, okay. Ginblade of Irmes. Uh, that one looks good. One-handed weapon. 
and an agonizing splinter pistol. We're going to use that one as well. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So, where is the blade? I think... The wielder deals damage to the target with a sword. The wielder gets a uh, plus three bonus to weapon skill, ballistic skill, toughness and strength. Uh, whilst the target suffers minus three penalty until the end of combat. That is a nasty, nasty blade. If you can combine that with uh, a lot of attacks of opportunity, then you're golden. That's the win condition right there. Splinter Pistol, I think we're uh, with rate 5 of fire is great. And we're going to give that to Jay. I'm not sure about the Shadow Field yet. Um, versatility Stakes. Uh, you should. Um... You should have uh, that. What what kind of cloak are you using? Cloak grants the wearer 10% dodge. Increase all incoming damage. By the number of versatility stacks. And we do have quite a few. Oh, that's a great tanking cape. Love it. Oh, no, 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 that was the wrong character. Oh, come on. Although it's a nice cape here as well, but, but we don't have versatility stacks. Just straight up dodge is good enough for Saiken. I was actually looking at our tank. Um, is this it? Per reduction? No. Good. The other one that we do have is each time the wearer dodges a melee attack, they gain an agility bonus critical hit chance until the end of their next turn, which is not bad if you dodge a lot of attacks. But this here clearly is the more the more damage resisting version. And we need more med kits very soon. Okay, cool. Well, that was truly an end fight. One worthy of a commentary, because that one was great. And I think we finally made it off of uh, the uh, crafts world. With the physical horrors of Kimura behind them, a long and arduous journey, possible only with the help of a Xenos guide lay ahead for the rogue trader and his party. From one strange destination to the next, through unknowable environments, the mere sight of which could drive one to madness. Challenges. They manage to escape the labyrinthian webway and find their way back. Home? That's a good question.
Uh, who are you? You're not bandits, are you? And chumming around with inhuman scum, no less be gone, you lanky freak. I compel you with the Saint Cognito's name, with Saint Nicomandus Cafe's name, and Saint Drusus' name. Uh, I'm Rogue Trader Van Valencius. Blessed throne, you're joshing me, his lordship, in these here backwoods. What an honor, what a big honor. All right. Will there be Chetty Mark be flying to the capital with your lordship? He's He's got an awful big mouth. He looks like trouble. Yes, Zenos is coming with me as my guest. Uh, oh, this won't went well. With guests like those, you better grab them by the floppers uh, and to the pyre. Burn them right quick. Oh, finally we're back in the void ship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to level up. I need to equip everybody. And I just need to thort, uh, sort things out. And it'll be fun. It was a long jo journey through Komora. It was a good end fight. I like that. But boy, was it long to get through there. Welcome to the bridge, Lord Captain. Like the rest of the crew, we are overjoyed by your return. Thank the Emperor for it. The crew stares in awe and terror to the giant cowering, uh, towering over the crowd. Some make a sign of Aquilia on their chest. Marazai's presence alone is enough to elicit sights of dismay and whispers from the crowd. The Druk hurry ignores all of the monkey's reaction to his person and surveys the ship's bridge, examining every detail with an ostentatiously business-like interest. Shireen, the light of my eyes, I am overjoyed to see you amongst us once more. Truly, the exalted one is merciful in showing you your way back home. Idiria is happy as well. Where was my ship all of the time? At the officer's council, we decided that to take a ship to footfall. Uh, footfall where we can hear the gossip of the entire expanse. Our agent tirelessly searched for information about your lordship. While you were away, Lord Captain, we took every effort to find you that resulted in a number of modifications to the ship that we have significantly upgraded. Thanks to the favorable deal we made to the, with the extreme, uh, esteemed High Factorum, the ship is now equipped with state-of-the-art Ultra system uh, and find directions directly from Kiava Gamma. How much do you know about our, my abduction? Not much, Lord Captain. Uh, since your Lordship's body was never recovered, we hope, uh, hoped against hope that you were still alive. Dare we inquire what happened? Um, early it helped the Jirikari abduct me and take me on to the Kamora. Xenoscum. Uh, this is quite enough faming and fuzzing. I wish to return to the duties immediately. Hello, Normals have welcomed you back. We sense a great deed has uh, has been done. A vivid imprint of an existence. You did something very important. What was it? I triumphed over the enemies of humanity. One day we will all fall before the sacred flame. For now we can be satisfied. And having the enemies of terror destroy one another. I'm glad you are having a learning and interest in understanding. No most are glad too. We must now. Uh, we must go now. We will come to speak to you later. We're glad to see order restored in the dynasty and resume reign. We are concerned about you and your well being. And I'm sure something else is coming up. Things are never that easy. You 
Your Lordship, I must report a highly compromising information about the member of your retinue, uh, Jay, Hen uh, Jay Hendari who it turns out is nothing of a sort but a commoner, a fugitive from the law and a des deserter of the Imperial Guard. I want to know the details. I have overlooked some nuances, but solid evidence uh, that the person whom we presently know as Jay uh, Meharadi served in the 19th a Freed Regiment. This individual is not of noble birth, but of the lowest orange. All right, Jay, what do you have to say? Shocked me, did you, you little wannabe quester? Don't miss a thing, your servants, I can. And they're sneaky, too. They climb off the Grok's arse to find out what they want to know. We need to talk about your past, <laughs> only if the scum slings his hook. Well, your lordship, ask away. I'll tell it like it is. I'm not going to try to wriggle out of it. So what do you want to hear, Sherin? A children's tale about a beautiful princess. A ballad about a queen of thieves. How about a new story, Sherin? Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived on a sand-covered lump of rock. And the core of that rock contained untold riches for servants of the Imperium. The girl scraped out those riches with her little hands, breaking her back and coughing up her lungs on behalf of people who had never clapped eyes upon her and who would never know her name. She did this every day until she turned 16. And then, then his servants came and drafted the girl into the 19th Ifrit Regiment. Can you imagine? Of course, the regiment was wiped out on its first sortie, but the girl survived. The Exalted One protects. So what was next? Years serving in the Astra Militarium? Just a shitload of hard labor? And fighting? And deals? And shady connections? And new opportunities? But everything in this world ends sooner or later, Sherin. The now not-so-little girl went and fell in with the Kasbalika. She saved up a little gold, and she even indulged in excess from time to time. Until living the good life almost cost the little girl her head after her patrons got caught in an internal investigation between the Officio Prefectus and Departamento Munitorum. So the girl ran as fast as her little legs could carry her until her eyes and the whims of fortune brought her to the expanse. A shitty story, all things considered, Sherin. Or say anything you did not lie about, Jay? Oh, so many things, Sherin. I'm struggling to keep track of them all. I told you the truth about the Expanse, and not a single word of it was a lie. What I told you about Footfall and Vladayim and how we do business in these parts, all true. Don't get me wrong, the apple of my weary eye. There are two things in this life that I dislike. Looking back at the past and having someone pry into my soul without asking. Do you have family? The folks on Footfall or my only family, Sherin. The so you used to be in the Imperial Guard. Hidari reporting for duty, sir. I've had enough. What happened to your hand? It was orcs. Not everything I say is a lie, Sherin. How did you get involved with the Kasbalika? What? You think it's difficult? Once me and my fellow guardsmen snuck into the upper city in search of a good watering hole where the high and mighty of that world congregated. Another time, our regiment was sent to defend the tallest spires on a hive world. And I had an epiphany. I saw how the other half lives. And by half, I mean the ones born with a diamond spoon in their mouth instead of an entrenching shovel rammed up their arse. My eyes were open to the truth, Sherin. The Imperium is full of opportunities. Even for people like myself. I see. Whoop the fu- mm. Never mind. About your new persona. Are you worried I'm going to start spitting on the deck and shriveling your officer's ears with my foul tongue? Don't be, Sherin. I much prefer being seen as a princess. Who's this mercy of Dungrod has accused you of associating with? We knew each other once. He helped me make the move to the Expanse and establish my first connections. But that's an old story I prefer not to poke at if I can help it. Things right. are good I think in my we've life covered now, everything. Return to your sir, duties. Sir, yes, sir. Your lordship, Sherin. 
I'll be here, all primed and ready to go. Uh, now then, Lord Captain, shall we go to business? We have a number of items to go over. The Expanse is in flames. Your Lordship, squadrons of smaller group of Drukhari raids on our systems. The cult of the Final Dawn has emerged in full force, wrecking havoc everywhere. I've heard rumors of the fall of Saint Pride. An outrageous sacrilege, uh, sacrilege given how abundant and inexpensive Prometheum is there. Strife has broken out between House Winter Scale and House Corda. Chaos reigns everywhere. Um, the esteemed Lord Inquisitor is trying to fight it, concentrating all available forces at footfall to tighten them and smash the ramparting heretics in Xenos Vermin. What kind of Xenos are attacking the Expanse? Drukhari, your lordship, the squadrons, both large and small. How fair the worlds of my dynasty? The heretics' malicious act make it difficult to maintain astropathic context with the colonies. The cult of Final Dawn strikes everywhere, and the sleeper agents are on every planet. On Virbus uh, 6, a mutiny was crushed after a group of newly arrived prisoners succumbed to the blasphemous propaganda. Um, so, Xavier Kalasar led the defense? Exactly. The esteemed Lord Inquisitor declared himself commander of the Corandus ex uh, Expanse and issued orders to requisition troops. He made footfall his base of operation. From there, his fleet strikes throughout the Expanse, destroying the forces of the cult of the Final Dawn. All right, what's the problem between the other two houses? The esteemed Lord Inquisitor called upon the rogue traders to join forces. Ladyship Insidia heeded the summonings while Lordship um, Caligos ignored it. Rumors had us that his refusal was defined in manner and served as a pretext for Lady Quarter to declare war on House Winterscale. Is there anything else I should know? There have been other minor developments if you wish. We'll gladly bring them up to speed on the bridge. Would you not want to take any way um, away from this occasion? Lord Captain. Allow me to make a request, a personal one. Abelard, my dude. Whilst you were away, Zakari Weitz received an astropathic message from Draconis. It concerns my family. How is it possible? Cannot comprehend it. The Vizarians have served the rogue trader dynasty loyally for generations. It's hard for me to admit, but I'm simply crushed by the news. The accusations were leveled by the drive steams. Uh, the governor family under normal circumstances the investigation would not have required your involvement but my entire family would have been being of noble stock the versarians are entitled under the ancient customs to petition for rogue traders personal protection your personal protection lord captain do not deny us this uh, honor tell them i will personally take part in the investigation will do lord captain all right, of course. Idirian hurriedly <laughs> enters your study, sniffing and hutching her shoulder. She looks haggard. With some effort, she focuses her eyes and forces a crooked smile. Thank you for agreeing to hear me out. Here's the deal. After that happened recently, the voice in my head suddenly flared up and started grabbing worse than before. Don't get the wrong idea. I'm handling them just fine, but I think I know a way I can get them out to settle down. I keep having the same vision over and over again. I'm walking down a corridor, there's a door at the end, and I just uh, know that right behind the door is a blissful uh, silence. I can feel the cold rough metal and then suddenly a snap um, out of it and always find myself staring at a wall of some compartment. I look behind me and all the doors um, on the way are open, but I have no memory of how to get there. We will find this door. Thank you, my lord. Anyone else with anything? The Exalted One bless you, Van Valencius, for your lagres of spirit, Sharin, and thank you for uh, denying to, uh, dining to speak with me. Here's the thing, Sharin, my network of trade representatives have been stretched too thin recently. Supplies all over the place and revenues are plummeting. If that wasn't by bad enough, my guys running things from football have been incommunicado recently. And the Astropass messages have finally come to me to tell me um, why. Some Ashmac has captured my gang and they are threatening to kill every little one of them. 
All right, we will help you. I look forward for the day, Shireen, and praise the Exalted One. And of course, we have more people that want stuff. Saiken, I apologize for bargaining unannounced. I've received news and I must discuss with you face to face. You may recall that I mentioned Achialias. The Achialias scandal was transferred into me by the remit of my colleagues. The colleagues' questions have contacted me. She requires my immediate assistance. Uh, how did you circumvent me and acquire the information from the astropathic message? Lord Captain and Rogue Trader may be in the position to challenge the Inquisition's authority over their soul, mind and action, but Rogue Traders, astropaths and box officers hardly. Who's your colleague? Um... Emilia Lichtenhardt, Sage to the Lord, Inquisitor. Um, I believe I have a clear picture of Emilia now. What was her message? Emilia's message is incomplete and distorted. The only thing we know for certain is that the Archolite of the Inquisition is asking me to go immediately to Phaeton 4, a remote planet. In her message, it seems to be requesting either military support or an evacuation, whatever. Uh, precipitated to this request, Emilia would not make it if it weren't absolutely necessary. All right, I shall help you. Already spoken to the navigator and provide them uh, provided them with the coordinates. Anyone else? Of course. What is going on? Catch a sight of you, the curious Q members dash to their post, leaving only senior officers in the middle of the bridge. For how long are you going to tolerate this filth on your ship? Rogue trader, has the Alderi heresy clouded your judgment? Dude, guys, did you just asked me to help you, okay? And now you're starting to, uh, to seek for beef. Iliad will now apologize to everyone who has been harmed by her deed, and that'll be enough. And now the Ashurabi will walk on her hind legs before the monkey. I'm glad I've decided to drop by and see what all the fuss was about. My words will not heal the wounds of your bodies, and still I regret what you have uh, to endure because of me, is what she says. Words will not fix what has been done. And of course, no one believes her. Disappointed by the outcome of the confrontation, the officer presents slowly return to their duties. They will forgive you, not all of them, but they will. Stop it, I cannot believe that Allah Tanakh. I do not need words of comfort. Only your thoughts matter, yours and mine. Are you alright? Your monkeys have had it worse. I will live. And the wounds of my soul will eventually heal. It's time to get back to work until we meet again, Elanach. Okay, guys. Ooh, that was a lot to take in. I will need to check equipment, level everything up, get ready for another round of rumbling. That was a long episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, we are done with act number three, and I think we're now in act four. Yeah, chapter four. Let's go, baby. Look at that. Dozens of companion quests, so lots to do there. And uh, that is uh, there. That's, that, that's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Thanks for watching. See you later, and have a good one. Bye-bye.